Hello, uh, welcome to Art Appreciation Section 2. This is uh, for the fall of 2017. Um, thank you very much for being here. So this is the first of our lectures um, that are online video lectures that go with um, the other lectures that are in class. And like I described on Friday, um, for every unit there will be a component that's art historical, a component that is about art impulses, a component about an art medium, and um, also a component about a, a design element or a design principle. So, and we are going to use the art historical uh, lectures as kind of a starting point to lead into each unit. And each of the art historical lectures is going to be an online video. And so we're going to start with the Paleolithic and lead to the Neolithic because that's a great way to begin. And so we will start this lecture by first discussing what is Paleolithic culture, kind of just uh, setting the basic parameters so we're all on the same page, and talk a little bit about what kind of art we see um, in the Paleolithic period, and what kind of uh, materials we see from that time period, and then um, that, that will lead into the lecture part two. And so first thing is what do we know what about the Paleolithic period? The word Paleolithic um, comes from the Greek root lithos, it means um, the old Stone Age. And so this Paleolithic period is a very long time period, but we're really only thinking about the time period, the part of the Paleolithic in which Homo sapiens existed, and that's for about 200,000 years ago till now. Um, and the primary, the, the point of the Paleolithic, or the part of the Paleolithic that we're we are going to be focused on, is the Upper Paleolithic, and that um, dates from about 50,000 BCE to somewhere between 15 to 10,000 BCE. Uh, just so you know, all the information there's the um, there's three parts to the Paleolithic in terms of human existence, the lower, middle, and upper Paleolithic. And then there's a period called the Mesolithic, which exists um, in between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic. And then we have the Neolithic, which is otherwise known as the New Stone Age. Okay, so um, we don't know a lot about the human cultures that existed in the Paleolithic uh, period. There were certainly many of them, but we don't know how many. Um, from what we can tell, they were nomadic and hunter-gatherers. They did not live in any kind of settled communities. Uh, as far as we can tell, no signs of towns. Um, and some evidence seems to indicate that they were matriarchal cultures, meaning that they were um, centered around uh, a female divinity organization and possibly even um, kind of you know following matriarchal lines um, it, like such as that it was important who your mother was rather than who your father was um, but this is all this gets into conjecture there's evidence that that could be the case but we don't know for certain um, they definitely did not live in caves uh, we have almost no evidence whatsoever of Homo sapiens in these time periods uh, living in caves, but what we do have is a lot of evidence of uh, people um, using caves as places of worship, as places of gatherings, um, and so we have a, a lot of examples of that. And and because of that, we have lots of cave art. Um, what we call cave paintings, and we'll talk a little bit more about whether they should be called cave paintings or not later on. Um, and besides the, the cave paintings and other kind of cave art, we also have some other kinds of things to see in the Paleolithic period. Um, we have, um, you know, uh, drawings on on rock walls, you know, outside of caves, and we also have lots of. Uh, small kind of uh, figurines and sculptures, um, mostly that we would call uh, votive figurines, and we'll talk about those a lot in part two of this lecture. Okay, besides those things, there's we a lot that we don't know. Uh, keep in mind that this is a really long time, 
period of time, 50,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE, that's 40,000 years, um, which compared to the 6,000 years of human existence that has occurred since history, since people have been writing things down, you know, so from ancient Egypt to now, that's about 6,000 years. Um, 40,000 years is a very long time period for a lot that could or possibly could have happened. So, like I said, uh, the artwork that we're going to be looking at is primarily two types, um, works, uh, modifications of caves, otherwise known as cave paintings, as well as uh, figurines. And the th there are three main cave sites that you should know about, although we will be focusing primarily on Chauvet. But the three main cave sites are Chauvet, Lascaux, and Altamira. Altamira was, of the three, um, was the first discovered and actually one of the earliest cave paintings discovered. Um, and uh, Lascaux is a very famous one, but Chauvet is the one we're going to be focused on because it's in the best condition. It was the most recently discovered, um, and it is truly extraordinary. Um, like I said before, besides cave paint, paintings and other alterations of caves, um, we also have these small figurines like this uh, Venus of Holofels here um, as uh, other kinds of art. So lastly, um, for this first part, I just want to talk a little bit in specifics about Chauvet Cave. I want to recommend that for anybody who wants to learn more about it, there's a, a great movie called uh, The Cave of Forgotten Dreams. Um, which is a documentary about exploring the cave and it gives you lots of beautiful images as well as lots of really interesting information. There is actually the preview for that movie on the playlist that goes with this unit. Um, so feel free to, to watch that. And Chauvet is a truly amazing site. And But in this class, we're probably more than anything else, we're going to be looking um, from that site. We're going to be looking at this one image. This is one of the images that will be certainly seen over and over again in this class. And this is a detail of the Wall of Lions from Chauvet Cave. Here's a larger view, but it the Wall of Lions is even bigger. Remember, it's hard to get an image of any one of these sites um, fully because these are caves and they're curved walls. Um, but uh, I want you to also to look at the image here of the lions hunting and to think a little bit about um, what we might know or what we might be able to, to conjecture about um, why these caves were painted this way. One of the theories is that the caves were made um, as part of magic rituals, um, religious practices that involved uh, kind of imagining hunts in order to then make the, the eventual hunts that they were going to go on more productive, more, more yielding of... Uh, of food. Um, also, there's probably there's a lot of thought that maybe a lot of the art is based on um, kind of a clan totems. You know that like a clan might have a lion as their totem animal. They see themselves as lions, and so that then they draw lions hunting as a representation of that. Um, but we don't know for certain what the point of view was. Um, there's also been a lot of talk about why the multiplicity and the kind of like transparency overlapping one line to another. Um, one theory is that it, it's about showing motion and I think to a certain degree that might have something to do with it um, or you know seeing you know different kinds of lines and different poses. Um, another theory is simply that every time a group of people, a clan, came back to the site, they might put a new one, and the old ones might have faded a little bit, so they wound up almost accidentally creating these multiple repeating images, um, and then it was only through time that all of the um, all the images that were from different time periods all kind of came together um, and kind of like existed in the same space. Uh, we don't know for certain, um, but it definitely adds a sense of drama and excitement to these images. And and I guess that's the last thing I want to say about this. You know, when, when Altamira was first discovered, people were uh, amazed at how fresh and active and energetic the drawings and paintings were and how kind of similar they felt to a lot of um, modern art of the earliest 20th century. So, um, and that's a just a very interesting thing. I, and I guess 
one of the things that it suggests is that you know there are as much as there are huge gaps of difference between us and the people who made this that there are also some commonalities all right that ends part one for um, for the lecture on the Paleolithic. Part two will take from the cave paintings and go on to talk about Venus figures before 